Okay, so there, there's with it with the gating off. So we just got basically an oscillator running. And when we turn the gating on. Okay. Paul's gonna have to Paul's gonna have to give us the uh, the judgment as to whether there's any difference there, Ron. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn the He's patching a leak in the bottle first. Okay, so that's basically Two leaks. what we've got here. Yeah, one on each side. Yeah. Okay, what we've got here right now is we've got the main oscillator right here buzzing away at about what? I'm not even sure what frequency. I guess it's no point in bringing up a number, but we've got high frequency with a low frequency gating action. So I turn off the gating action, just got strictly the main oscillator, and then we turn the gating on. Let's turn the oscillator on and off, and then as I go like that, you can see the gating. This is the range circuit of the gating oscillator. You can see that I'm now switching at a much slower frequency, and then when I get down to here, I, don't, I think it's below the scopes. Yeah, see, it's practically below the scope's capability of going that low. So what I want to see is if there's a difference between here and there. And what I saw on my bench, there wasn't. And right now, we're drawing 0.4 of an amp, but are we getting any bubbling action? Yeah, you are. Fair bit. But what was it like compared to your power supply? Well, I have to wait for it to push the water back out because right. I just squeezed it. Okay, but so it's I'm not really doing much compared to what I was doing. Yeah, well, I, I knew really it wouldn't do as much. Uh, the whole idea is to try and get it. Yeah, efficient. And then another thing is is resonance, right? We don't know what the resonance is of this. That's I could true. tweak this to the exact resonance. Okay, it's just about to start pumping out some more in there. First bubble right there. That's getting on, so. But yeah, it's uh, and I mean, if I just crank all this right up, it's practically DC anyways. It's off so little that it might as well be DC. Really, you know what, now that I think of it, the way we should have tested this was this power supply on both, because we're dealing with different voltages now too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this your power supply being a higher voltage is going to put out more than this particular one. And if I put 24 volts into the circuit, it's going to blow it up because it's designed for 12. Mm -hmm. So that's... To really quantify uh, what's going on, we need to do the test again with this power supply. But that's the thing: is how do we quantify how much gas we're getting? You know, that's, that's bang the thing. for your buck. That's what it's about, man. In like, would you have a flame sitting there, and just every time it pops, you count the seconds between the pops, and that would be a rudimentary way of no. I mean, what what I was doing at one time is I had a slight leak in the cell, so I could see the barrier between the gas and the water and if I cranked it, it would start creating pressure and the line would start moving down and if I backed it off, it would go back up. So that was giving me not a number but telling me less or more. Yeah. And that's when I started playing with this gating and found that, hey, it dropped a tiny bit but look what the current did. It dropped huge. So have you achieved that yet? Have you had the resonance so you can drop the current low? I don't have any idea what the resonance is of this cell or that cell at this point. What I'm thinking of doing is exactly what I did in school, is to take a signal generator, not this crappy thing, but a real signal generator, and you basically, um, no, there you go, the fuel cell works. <laughs> but it's really slow. Yeah, but that's, that's what I'd say, we'd have to try it on this yeah, now because... It's going about a quarter as fast as, you know... Okay, so we're drawing about 0.4 of an hour. 0.46 of an amp yeah. right now. Now, what I want you to tell me is if this makes take a, you got a good idea what that's doing now? Oh, I got a good idea. Okay, tell me what that does. <laughs> tell me if that dropped it. Okay, what if it starts pushing now? Somewhere. We're now down to 0.43 oh. of an amp. So, how many, what's their wattage? At this uh, well, point? 12 volts times 0.43. What's the math there? I can't do it off the top. If it was 0.5 oh, an amp, I could tell you right now. Okay. Okay, five, five watts. Yeah, right. times point just, four. Just under five. Did, did you see a difference when I just threw the switch here? Yeah, it's going a little. I don't know. It's, is it about the same? It's a little faster. Okay, let me switch it back to higher gating. What I'm getting at is I did not personally see a difference in the gating. In other words, going high frequency, not high frequency, not high frequency, not or high frequency, not high frequency. Not, 
you know, the gating, turning the main off yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now I've got it set fairly high gating factor. Uh, yeah. You know, so you're getting high frequency, high frequency, well, higher and faster than what I'm doing. And I was getting Paul to watch it, then I switch it to really slow gating, and I, on my bench, did not see a difference. And, you know, lower gating, slower, basically you turn the main oscillator on less, gives you less current draw. Now, so Reed, in your, in your view, are we getting a, a gain by using the Stanley Meyer circuit? I think what we're doing is we're si I don't know, if, you know, I don't know how to quantify how much energy is coming out of here, but all I can tell you is that this is drawing less power than steady DC. But of course it's producing less gas. Okay, I just switched the gating down to a lower frequency. Now actually Paul said it was producing down. more gas. You see any effect? Well, Wayla starts pushing bubbles out again. I just okay, finished. let me let me put it on the top.